Our next guests are board-certified emergency room physicians. They weren't happy with those typical first aid kits that you would pick up at the drugstore or went out for your children. So they said, we're going to take matters into our own hands. We're going to do this right. So they created their own baby stat and kid stat. Please welcome two of the three mommy doctors, doctors who are responsible for this. Dr. Mizuho, Mizuho am I getting right? Um, uh, uh, Spangler and Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Veronica Vasquez. Welcome, ladies, Thank for being you. How did How did you guys connect? Were you in the same ER together? Or? We actually, there's three of us. Um, our third partner isn't going to make it today, but we all met in residency. We trained as ER physicians together uh -huh. at LA County USC Medical Center. That's and right. we yes. stayed very close friends uh, throughout residency and thereafter. We now have seven children between all three of us oh and one more on the way. Oh, so we know a thing or two about taking care of kids and being physicians ourselves. We just realized we were getting hit up a lot by friends and family about medical emergencies, about different types of injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, my kid is sick, we're getting calls in the middle of the night, texts, and we realized that the kits that were out, they're really lacking in some of the things that we use in the ER and on our own kits, you know? We, get, we have our own little kits that we had at home, and so we decided we need to really bring these to families so that they can, they can provide the same type of care to their kids. All right, well, let's start with the kids' kit first, and I know Debbie and Orly are particularly interested oh in this. And tell us what we can find in here. So we wanted to organize KidStat. This is for any mobile child. So the minute your kid starts up and walking, this is when you need this. And it addresses the three most common pediatric injuries. So um, cuts and scrapes, mm -hmm. aches and sprains, and bites and burns. Are you seeing what this, yeah. ladies? Yeah. So it's because when you open it, you immediately know, oh, oh my God. child has a cut or a scrape. You yeah. know exactly where to go within this kit to get so what you So part need. of what we're doing is trying to keep it organized for you so that in that moment of panic, you know where to go. Uh -huh. And then when you open it up on the inside of the case, you actually see the instructions, which give you first stop is the red flags. So if you meet any of those criteria, you need to go straight to the emergency room. I don't want you rummaging through the rest of the kit. Oh, that's if you yeah. pass go, then you, there's actual step-by-step -step instructions on how to use everything that's inside. Which is oh. all inside of here. Our stitch is included. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's an emergency. Yeah. 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 If you so, come to our house, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can actually give yeah, our stitches, our right? House, okay. What are some no. of the main concerns we have for a child at this point when we open it up and we look in there? You know, I think that if you look at, say, like cuts and scrapes, I think one of the biggest concerns or questions that parents have is their kid falls and they get a cut how do I know if they need stitches or yeah. Yeah. bleeding? And like, what do I do? You know, a lot of times the first aid kits have a lot of those alcohol swabs on there or pads. Yeah. You should never use those on a wound. Really? And every kit is packed with those. And so, yeah. um, Oops. you know, we, we teach you <laughs> just to irrigate it under room temperature water and uh -huh. hold pressure so that it stops bleeding. And then if, if it's deep or if it looks contaminated or dirty, then you need to come to the ER. Um, the other kind of what we call the golden window of um, closure is that really wounds should be closed under uh, eight hours. And so if you come to us after eight hours to 12 hours, you're really narrowing the risk of us. I think people get really um, distressed by that because they come the next day. And yeah. You can imagine it's on the face, something comes yeah. yeah. oh. And we say, well, you can't close that now because it's at risk of getting infected. It's really disheartening to parents and you feel bad. And it's going to be a You scar. feel like, you know, you, you missed a fracture. Yeah. Or you missed, you Rub it in. That. Rub it in. <laughs> you don't want to be that like crazy helicopter yeah. parent that's taking them and rushing them to the hospital and like all over it for something minor and then the back of your mind, you're thinking, but what if? What if? And so yeah. it's, it's that information is like gold yeah. right there. And no we parent wants to Google, right? No one wants to Google when you're Well, as soon oh, as you right. Google, yeah. you, everything bad comes up. Yeah. yeah. It's not a good idea. There's like, now, like bites, uh, bites in particular, like spider bites or, you know, a snake bite, whatever. How, how do you know when it's, when to bring the child in? So that's a really good question. poisonous. Yeah. yeah. So bites and burns is a, another compartment in there. And again, we address sort of the allergic reaction or anaphylaxis if you're to get like a mm -hmm. bee sting. So we provide the tweezers in there. In there. No, no, there's no EpiPen because that isn't really safe for all kids. But, um, but at least it tells you when you need to go with a bite. More importantly is the burn section. One of the, my favorite things in the burn is this item that you can't get anywhere else. Else. So this is saline dressing. So unlike adults, mm -hmm. um, when kids get burned, every pediatric burn needs to be seen by a physician. And there are certain burns that really need to come to the emergency room. Why? Um, the reason is because kids are growing, obviously, and so certain areas of their body, so their over joints on their face, can scar down and actually delay um, growth over oh, certain areas. Yeah. Oh, so whereas wow. you and I get burned, you throw a little Neosporin on it, you move on with your yeah. day. Um, 
kids, we've seen all, everything, mayonnaise, butter. Don't put anything on it, a saline uh, dressing or even just a wet towel, mm -hmm. just so you don't trap it. And never meat. ice. Don't never, never ice. ice. No. 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 Yeah, yes. Just, again, room temperature water. And, uh, head Do you to dress it with anything? If you don't, so have, if you don't, if you have, don't this, have that. Then I would just honestly run it under tap water and mm -hmm. then don't put anything on it. Just come in. Or just buy this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Let's just make life easy. Yeah. Um, let's go on to the baby stat. So from so this is where they're mobile, you yeah. said, right? If they're not, Dr. So Barley, this, is, this is really geared for a baby's first year. So I'll be the first to admit, I'm a doctor. Everyone assumed that I would know what to do. I was terrified. I had no <laughs> idea. Like every mom, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's terrifying. It's, you're, this person is coming home with you. Yeah. It's yours. And so this really is about, you know, it's separated into in, in categories again, but it's really about keeping things simple. So you have ouchy, yucky, cranky. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's cute, it's also functional. So one of the biggest things that people get concerned about with the babies is, you know, are they breathing okay? And yeah. when kids get sick, it can be really, really scary. Obviously, we have our red flag. So if the child is breathing way too fast, if they're making funny noises, they're grunting, they're wheezing, something is not right. If there's any color change at all, any blueness around their mouth, in their hands, you gotta go to the ER. Okay, this is not the kit. Leave the kit and, and mm -hmm. run because we really need to assess that child and make sure they're breathing okay. okay. That's not happening. There are a lot of things that you can do at home. Now, as you can imagine, if babies are obligate nose breathers and that means that they have they breathe primarily through their nose. So if they're trying to choose between bottle feeding or breastfeeding and they can't breathe, they're gonna to choose to breathe. So they're not gonna to wanna to eat. So we get a lot of parents coming yeah. in the middle of the night saying, yeah. oh, my baby doesn't wanna drink anything, you know, he's he's not you know taking the breast, he's not taking the bottle, and it's really it's really breathe. stressful. And so one of the things in here that's really helpful that I really love is this. It's amazing. It's the nasal yeah. bulb suction. Okay, that. and this is used in NICUs everywhere, used in the hospital, like gold. And if you forget it or if you don't realize when you leave the hospital that that's what you need, it's like panic time, yeah, where is the nasal bulb? Right. And we tell you how to do it, how to appropriately suction the baby so they can breathe okay mm -hmm. and they can continue to eat and you can go about your business. Yeah, I, I, we had one thing in my first aid kit growing up and that was cow salve, if you know what that is, and that sealed oh, everything. That's all that's we had. That's actually so good. But, yeah, it is, it's really good, but that that's all we had. Now I look at cranky and ouchy and yucky and I'm thinking we've got Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs down there. <laughs> you know, what happens though, where's fever fall under yeah. this? category for, for a child? So that's under ouchy. So fever is a big topic for parents and it's, again, another scary thing. It is. Yeah. They're on fire. What do oh I do? Gosh. What does that mean? Do I need to go to the hospital? Do I not? What temperature do you bring your child yeah. into so the hospital? That is, a big, that is a big thing. And the temperature of over 100.4 in an infant rectally in somebody who is zero to three months is a medical emergency. And I think a lot of parents don't recognize that. No. And the reason for that is that Babies at that age in the newborn period are very susceptible to serious bacterial illness, illnesses, so it can spread in their bloodstream. Oh, good God. And you can't tell, right? A baby, you can't really see. I mean, how are we alive on this planet? <laughs> it's, like, it's so dangerous. But it's one of those things that, you know, we as ER physicians, we know that. It's a no-brainer. You come in. We want you coming to the ER. We don't want you given, um, any, you know, any anti-fever medicine. Come in so we can assess them. Now, the most appropriate way and most accurate way to take a temperature in a baby is rectally. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it's like, well, I'm going to stick a temperature where yeah mm -hmm. but we tell you in our kit how to do that we provide a rectal thermometer we give um, lubricant so you can know how to do it and we give you the guidelines in terms of where the fever you know what type of fever and head to the emergency room